What's up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. These are my DraftKings MMA picks for UFC Vegas 28. We have a very good card. We have 14 fights on this card. And yeah, looking forward to it. I always like when there's a lot of fights. It really gives you an edge when it comes to MMA DFS. So looking forward to it, looking to break it all down. Before we do so, if you can leave a like on this video and also subscribe if you have not yet, would be much, much appreciated. And also do want to point out that it is now a phenomenal time to sign up on the Patreon. And I just want to kind of show you guys some new things we got going on here. Um, so it was last month where I brought on Uncle Weezy. And this is, uh, you know, first the, the stat model, the advanced stats he has here. And just so much information you see here. If you are a stats guy like me, um, there's just so much useful information. The record, the finish, the wins, the losses, experience, striking offense, defense, etc. Just so much stuff. And you can see how much information there is here. And then also he did bring on, I believe he, you know, this is the first week we're bringing this on. It's the, the matchup template where we have the matchup, the tail of the tape, the pro experience. It's all side by side. So you can really see the difference between the stats. You can see the tail of tape, and it's very uh, you know easy on the eye as well. So shout out to Uncle Weezy. Um, he did bring the on there. So that's the one thing you get um, with the Patreon. And then also um, something I added um, two months ago was the optimizer. And this is huge. This is huge, especially considering that you know my MMA premium package is only $10 a month or $2.50 a week. And you just can't get that anywhere else. I mean, it's you know, fairly simple. You put in all your settings. I'll have my own projections up there. I'll have my um, pro projected ownerships up there. You can put your own on there, but you know, it's pretty easy. You want to make your lineups, you put it in 20, 150, and then it builds them in, you know, a couple seconds there. So um, of course, these are just based off of the average points right now, but I will be getting my pro uh, projected ownership in there. I'll be getting my projected points in there as well. And also you can do your own. So it's customizable and it's, it's awesome. So yeah, lots of stuff going on here. But with that, you'll also get access to discord you get the targets projections line percentages um, projected ownership so just tons and tons of info for ten dollars a month like honestly um it's, it's a must-have it's a must-have so check that out the links in the description almost 300 members on there and uh yeah just going to continue to hopefully you know keep improving the content keep bringing stuff on and uh, I think those are two huge things. The Uncle Weezy stat model, I think, is huge, a game changer. And then also the optimizer, and then only $10 a month. So check it out. It really does help me. It really does help uh, support me to support the channel and support what I'm trying to do here. So with all that out of the way, let's get into it. So we'll get into the fight. Doesn't go to decision lines. Here we have um, Dusko Todorovic going against Gregory Rodriguez is going to be the fight that is most likely to end inside the distance. And yeah, this is probably the fight where I'm going to have my highest exposure. I think someone's going to sleep, and I think someone's going to sleep pretty early as well. Um, 8,600 for Dodorovic and 7,600 for Rodriguez. I think they're both definitely in play. I'm not sure what I'm going to do my ownership yet, but I do know that I'm probably going to be like pretty close to 100% own on this fight. I mean, especially with their price ranges, I just don't see how this fight does not score you know well enough to get in the optimal lineup. I think someone's get, getting finished, and I think someone probably gets finished within the you know that first round and a half. So as far as a pick, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a 50-50 fight. I think someone's going to sleep. Um, I'll, I'll take Rodriguez as a dog, as a pick, but man, I, I really like both sides here from a DraftKings perspective. I think the winner does score well. Augusta Sakai versus Jarzina Rosenstruck. This is interesting. This is very interesting. We see, you know, this fight minus two of five fight doesn't go to decision. Usually if in a five rounder heavyweight fight, we probably see the fight doesn't go to decision around like probably like minus 300, minus 400, even wider. But this is a fight where, you know, it possibly could go to, to decision. It possibly could get extended. And I just have, you know, some massive concerns, especially considering, you know, it is a 14 fight slate. Um, you know, both these guys are, are really low volume, especially the Rosenstruck side. I don't think Sakai has that one punch knockout power. Rosenstruck does. So I just don't know what I'm going to do with that in this fight yet. I, I know it's five rounds. I know they're 8,200, 8,000. But um, if this is a low volume striking fight that gets into, you know, round three, round four, round five, or even decision, I just don't know if it's going to be enough to get on the optimal lineup um, outside of like a first round knockout, which is probably going to come from Rosenstruck. So if anything, honestly, I'll probably play some Rosenstruck, but really I might just you know not play much of this fight. I think there's going to be a lot of ownership on it because it is the main event, but I think a sneaky way to get away from this fight is just maybe fade it altogether. But uh, I will be playing some Rosenstruck because of that first round knockout threat. It's just I don't really think that's all that likely. So Going to be under on this one for sure. I don't know what I'm going to be doing yet with my exposure, but um, just something to think about. It's a fight that I think could get very, very ugly, and I don't think um, it can score that well if it does get outside of that first round. Um, 
Menon Fioro going against Tabitha Ricci. Uh, we have Ricci that is stepping in on a couple days short notice. And the big thing here for me is she's going to be extremely undersized. You know, she fights at 115. It's going to be her first fight at 125. And I think Manon Fioro is the real deal here. I think she does get it done. And we're put in the situation where she's now the biggest favorite on the card by a significant margin. She's around minus 550, minus, you know, closest to minus 600 on some books as well. And I do think, you know, she gets uh, probably a first round finish. I'd be kind of shocked if this did get, you know, extended, you know, just with, with the fighting style of both fighters and, you know, with how, you know, dominant um, Fioro has been looking. And I think she does pass this test. I mean, Richie, you know, she's a black belt in BJJ, but just watching the tape, she hasn't really fought anybody. Um, I think Manon does roll here, and, and we get Manon Fioro at eight thousand five hundred. We got to take advantage of that. There's gonna be people that you can either you know try to fade Manon completely, or you can you know go like all in. I'm not gonna go all in, but um, she will be my highest owned fighter because she's really gotta be. She's minus five fifty at eight thousand five hundred. You gotta play her. You gotta play a ton of her. And I do think she probably does find that finish. So, uh, yeah, not going to be playing much Richie. I mean, if she can get this fight down to the match, sure, she can have some success. I just don't know if she's, you know, big enough or strong enough to do, to do so. And then uh, Miguel Baeza going against Ponzinibbio here. Minus 175. Fight doesn't go to decision. Yeah, I think this fight has potential to finish for sure. I'll be playing both sides. I do like the prices of both guys. Baeza, 8,300. Uh, Santiago in 7,900. I have question marks on both guys' chins. We've seen Baeza hurt, you know, more than once. We've seen Ponzinibbio knocked out more than once as well. I think it's going to be a fun fight. Both guys pretty high volume. I think it has potential to score pretty well and possibly finish as well. So, um, both sides here for me. Uh, I'm more on the Baeza side. I think he's, you know, the younger fighter. I'm um, not really sure where Ponzinibbio is at at the moment. I'm not, I have question marks about Ponzinibbio's chin. Um, that layoff, did it take something away from him? You know, he, he dealt with a ton of stuff. Um, you know, away from the cage as well. So I like Baeza quite a bit, but I will have some Ponzi as well. All right, getting into the core plays, Montana De La Rosa, 9,300. Now you're thinking, uh, you know, Montana De La Rosa as a core play, you're, you're crazy, but no. I think this is a phenomenal stylistic matchup for her against Ariana Lipsky, who, you know, can be taken down. And once she is on the ground, she doesn't have much to offer. We saw Molly McCann take her down a couple times, control her for a little bit. We saw, uh, you know, Antonina Shevchenko, um, you know, take her down and, you know, dominate her, absolutely dominate her. And De La Rosa, she has a wrestling background, uh, brown belt and BJJ. You know, this is going to be the best wrestler that Ariana Lipsky has faced and honestly probably by a, a decent margin here. So I think De La Rosa rolls. I think with the new scoring system, I think she gets takedowns. I think she gets control time as well. And I think she can rack up a pretty good score and even might get a finish as well. So I love De La Rosa here. Um, honestly, like she's probably my favorite play outside of maybe Manon Fiora, who we'll talk about in a little bit, but she's probably my favorite play up in that 9K range. Miguel Baeza, 8,300, talked about it a little bit, but I think, you know, he's the younger fighter. I think he has a lot of power. I think he's a finisher. Ponzi Nibio, he just did not look the same coming off that layoff. Could it be a little bit of a, you know, cage rust? Maybe, but, but you know, Ponzi Nibio, it's not like he's getting younger. He's 34 years old. I think Baeza has a really good chance here to, you know, not only win the fight, but get a knockout as well. And he's sitting at 8,300. So I like Baeza quite a bit. I like the fight, you know, targeting the fight quite a bit as well. I have some Ponzi for sure. It's just, um, I think this is a really good fight for Baeza if the same Ponzi we saw against the lead shows up. But yeah, if Ponzi of old shows up, if Ponzi of 2017, 2018 shows up, yeah, Baeza could be in some trouble. It's just, I don't know if that, that's the same Ponzi. So give me Baeza here, 8,300. I'll have a decent amount. Man off your 8,500, not much to say here, talked about it a bit, you know, opponent coming in on short notice, she's a weight class below her, man on should be much stronger, much more powerful, you know, the much better striker by a much significant margin, and I'd be kind of shocked if she didn't, did not get a finish here, so you got to play her, you got to play her 8,500, you can either, you know, choose to go overweight, or you can choose to fade her, I'm more on the, you know, going overweight, and, you know, playing a ton of man on Fioro, I know it's, you know, scary, women's MMA, all that good stuff, but yeah, she should really you know, dominate this fight and, and probably finish it as well. And then Roman Delizzi, 8,400. I don't feel great about this, but I like the price tag. I like the stylistic matchup. Star Poli is somebody that's coming up a weight class. Delizzi is somebody that's fought at 205, you know, most of his career. He even had a fight at heavyweight before. I think it was uh, in his first fight in his MMA career as well. So Delizzi is going to be much bigger. He's going to have like a five and a half inch reach advantage. Uh, yeah, he, he probably gives Star Poli the striking advantage. He's much faster and much more volume. It's just I think the ground game is going to be the difference, and I think that ground game is what's going to rack up some points. The takedowns, the control time, and I think a submission is likely as well 
For Delidzi, it's just you can't trust Delidzi that much. I know he has terrible fight IQ. That's the only thing that's really, you know, holding me back from going crazy on it. But I think he do has to have some decent exposure on Delidzi here. Just stylistically, he probably should get this fight down to the mat, and he probably should get a ton of control time, and he probably should score well at 8,400. So I will be playing a decent amount of Delidzi. I'm not going crazy on it, but I will be, you know, playing a good amount of him. All right, getting into our GBP plays here, our tournament plays, Mason Jones, 9,500. I think he, he rolls here. I think he rolls here. I think Patrick can pose, you know, potentially some problems. Maybe he does get Jones down a couple times, but I don't think Patrick has the control ability, um, and I don't think Jones can be held down that all that easily. We've seen Jones be taken down, but he's really good at getting back up. He's a black belt himself. He's much younger, and the striking is just, you know, night and day. I think Jones is... The better striker by an absolute mile. We've seen Patrick knocked out in both of his two out of his three of his losses. And we've seen, you know, Patrick nowadays, he's getting wobbled with, you know, some anything that lands on him. Bobby Green wobbled him a couple times. I think Jones, we've seen Jones have a ton of power. I don't think that Patrick, uh, you know, takes the same shots that Mike Davis did against Jones here. I think Jones knocks him out probably early 9,500 it's going to scare a lot of people away but I'm going to have a decent amount of Mason Jones here I think he has a lot of finishing upside I think the knockout is uh pretty likely there all right and then Dusko Todorovic talked about it a bit but yeah a fight I want to target going you know nearly 100% I think someone's going to sleep both guys you know a ton of power both guys a ton of finishing ability both guys you know <laughs> you know chins very questionable both guys the striking defense is very questionable. You know, it all adds up, and, and you, you definitely think this fight has a, a good potential of finishing. I like Dusko. I think he has a chance to win, and if he does win, it's probably a ton of DraftKings points. So I'm playing him, playing both sides, though. But I think Dusko's a, a really good tournament option at 8,600. Would not go there in cash, though. Jordan Levitt, 9K. Um, I don't know. First fight of the night, I think this fight has potential to score well one way or another. We've seen, uh, you know, Levitt go in against uh, Contender Series. And get a first round sub. We've seen him slam down, um, you know, Matt Wyman in that first round. I don't know if he's going to make it look that easy against Poilos, but maybe he does. Maybe he does. There's just question marks with Poilos. We have not seen Poilos fight in a couple of years now. Um, he's very young. Poilos, 25 years old, training at a good, a good camp in Sanford MMA. So we could see some improvements from Poilos. I'm honestly not high on Jordan Levitt. But I think this fight as a whole has potential to score really well. I think this fight's going to primarily play out on the mat. If it doesn't, I mean, Levitt's probably in trouble, but I think it does. And I want to say, you know, the better, you know, grappler is going to be Levitt. It's just we have not seen Poilos in so long. On paper, uh, on paper, Poilos is a brown belt. You know, Levitt's a purple belt, I do believe. But I think the better grappler is Levitt. I think he's probably the better wrestler as well. Um, you know, extremely, extremely close with that. But I do think that Levitt has a good chance to maybe finish the fight, but at least, you know, get some top control. On the flip side, and we'll talk about it a little bit, would I be shocked if Poilos, you know, made massive, massive improvements? If Poilos, you know, you know, honestly took down Levitt, got some top control on him? No, I would not. I just think this fight as a whole probably does need to be targeted. Um, first fight of the night, probably low owned in a way, um, but I will be targeting this fight, you know, a decent amount, more than I honestly want to, but I think it has potential to score well. And then Marcin Tybura, 8,700, going against Walt Harris. I mean, I wouldn't go crazy on it because Walt Harris, we'll talk about him in a little bit. You know, the guy has a ton of power. I think the knockout for Walt Harris is somewhat likely. But Tybura, if he wins, it's going to be based off of takedowns. It's going to be based off of control time. And he probably gets a finish as well. So, got to have some for Tybura for sure. I think if he wins, you know, there's a ton of upside. It's just you don't want to go all in on it because of the power of Walt Harris. All right. Gregory Rodriguez, 7,600, and yeah, I, I like him here. I like him here at this dog price of 7,600. I think if he does win, it's probably by knockout, and if he does win, it's probably by first-round knockout as well. We've seen Dusko, you know, he's very hittable. No striking defense from the guy, and, you know, 46% striking defense so far in three fight sample, which is pretty, you know, pretty bad there, and Rodriguez, you know, he hits hard, so I don't know. Um... Really good underdog play here. I think at 7,600 here, I know uh, you know Dusko is probably the more talented fighter, but if he did not fix up that striking defense, I wouldn't be shocked at all if Rodriguez put him down here. So give me Rodriguez as a dog play, 7,600. But as a whole, I want to be really high exposed to this fight. Walt Harris, 7,500. Honestly, this is one of my favorite dog plays on the slate. Although I think that you know Tybura, you know probably should win. It's just Tybura, you know he's chinny. 
Ty Burr has been knocked out four times. Walt Harris, 100% finish rate. Walt Harris has won all of his fights by either a first-round knockout or a second-round knockout. And I would not be shocked in the slightest if he did that again here. Um, 7,500, if he does win, it's going to be on the optimal lineup. It's, you know, it's probably in that first round. Probably scores really high as well. So, yeah, I like Harris quite a bit as a dog. Yusuf Salau, 7,400. This is interesting here. He's, uh, you know... Going against Woodson, who Woodson's probably going to have that striking advantage. He's going to have a big reach advantage. It's just, I think, an interesting aspect of this fight is going to be the ground game. And I think that can score well on DK as well. We've seen Yusuf Zalao go out there and get takedowns. He took down Austin Lingo six times. Um, he was able to take down, uh, who was his last opponent? His last opponent, yeah, uh, Sungwoo Choi three times as well. Um, so we've seen him go out there and, and get takedowns, and I think Woodson, you know, is hard to take down initially, but if he can get down to Woodson, I do think that, you know, Woodson is, you know, has some uh, has some holes in his game, especially on the mat, and Zalao, he's a brown belt, just got his brown belt recently. Um, a sub could happen, potentially, but uh, maybe just he takes the back, controls him for, you know, around, uh, maybe takes around that way. I think the striking is going to be, you know, maybe a little bit more competitive than people think. But obviously, you got to favor Woodson. I just think the ground game could be a huge difference here. So I like Zalao, 7,400. I don't think he has like a major ceiling or nothing like that, but I think he could win a close decision, maybe a submission as well. And then Elir Latifi, 7,300. This is a very ugly fight. I'm not going to go crazy on this, but he is a live dog. I think if he can't get this fight down to the mat, kind of lay on Tanner Bozer. It's just... You know, even then, like, does it score enough to get in the optimal lineup on 14 fights? But he's just another live dog that, you know, he has that, you know, grappling upside, the wrestling upside, the takedown upside, control time upside. With the new scoring system, maybe it's enough. But even then, like, I don't see a finish for Latifi. I don't see Latifi landing a ton of strikes at all. Um, so he's going to have to get, like, multiple takedowns to really find the optimal lineup. And it's possible. I just think the ceiling's definitely limited. But if you're looking for a live dog, I think Latifi is one for sure. Uh, Claudio Poyo lost 7,200. And yeah, I mean, there's question marks with the guy. Very young. We haven't seen him in a while. He could make improvements at a really good camp. Brown Belt and BJJ. Yeah, I think he's live. I think he's very live. I'm, I've been looking to fade Jordan Levitt for, you know, a while now and have not been able to do it because they're trying to feed him, you know, very easy matchups, uh, build him up a little bit. Matt Wyman, guys like that. They're trying to give him another one here with Claudio Puelas. It's just there's question marks. Um, did he make those improvements? And I, I think he has the striking advantage. On paper, you know, he's a, he's a better grappler in brown belt compared to Levitt's purple belt, but you probably got to favor the, the ground game of Levitt there. I just feel like it's a close fight. I feel like it's a close fight. I feel like this line is, is very off. The salaries are very off, 7,200. Um, I feel like it can honestly go either way. So I'll have some play loss. I, I think it'll be very low owned first by the night. Um, everybody's on Jordan Levitt, it seems like, for the most part. But, um, yeah, I'll have some play loss for sure. I think he's a good chance to win this fight. And if he does, it's probably scores pretty decent. And then getting it to our fades, uh, Tanner Bozer, 8,900, you know, lowish volume, boring, heavyweight fight, that not much going on. He's not going to get takedowns, you know, not much of a finisher. Latifi, he has been knocked out before, but he's he's tough to knock out. I mean, if Derek Lewis can't knock you out, I don't, I don't think, you know, Tanner Bozer will. Um, just don't really see a need to play Tanner Bozer. Maybe he does get a first-round finish, but I just don't think that's likely at all. So I'm going to pretty much fade Bozer, Salikov, 9,100, and, you know, even lower volume, extremely low volume. I think he's one of the lower volume, you know, guys on the slate, averaging 2.85 significant strikes per minute, which is like the, the second or third worst on the entire slate. Well, fourth worst, you got 11 and Poy lost there. But either way, low volume, uh, really reliant on that first-round knockout. Even then, like, I don't know, like, he does not throw a ton at all, and, and Tornado's never been knocked out in, like, 34, 35 fights, something like that, so, uh, yeah, I um, don't really see a need to play Bozer or Salikov, usually don't have more than one fade on here, but uh, it's 14 fights, so I wanted to add another one, and I'm not gonna have much of these guys, if any at all. And that's about it. Just want to remind you guys, it's always a great time to become a member of the Patreon and receive full access to my model. We went over a little bit. We showed the stats, the new stats model, courtesy of Uncle Weezy, the matchup template as well. Um, we got the premium projections, the new optimizer, which, you know, is a, a crazy value in its own right. The GPP lineup percentages, the DraftKings article as well that drops later in the week. And then also access to Discord, $10 a month. $2.50 per week really does help me out. And I, I think it does provide a, a ton of a ton of value to uh, you know anybody out there that does choose to sign up so um but yeah that's been it guys thank you so much for watching
uh, you know, took a little bit of a week off, but back in it and uh, glad to be back and uh, tune into the live stream on Friday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Tune into the live stream Saturday, one hour prior to the prelims, which I believe the prelims start at 4, so we'll be going live at 3. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys always for the support. If you guys can leave a like, that would be much appreciated. And also subscribe almost to 11K. I think we're like 65 away. So hit the sub button. It really has helped me out. Um, and, yeah, good luck, guys, for UFC Vegas 28. Let's win some money.